Hi, this is Larry Greenblatt. I got a question from a viewer, Vinay Ramakrishnan. Thank you very much. I hope I pronounced that right. On uh, disaster recovery and business continuity, always one of the biggest sections, most commonly failed domains for me or areas of, when it was its own for over the 20 years I've been teaching this. So always worth looking at uh, the CISP objectives and also where, where are we today, at least as far as I know. Yeah. So let's make sure I explain the answer to your question and also help people understand where business continuity stands today. Uh, and I should also do it advertisement for my programs, and I do, uh, in addition to CISSP, CCSP, CISMC Risk, you can get pre-recorded classes, live online, personal dedicated one-on-one -on -one sessions, and uh, I have annual memberships. Look at that, for as little as two fifty, you can get all oh, four research, you can't beat that. All right, so here's the question. Which alternate site is best for an organization with unusual or proprietary equipment? That's all they said. They didn't say, and I got to be up within 24 hours, blah, 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 blah. Who should build it? You know, it, it's very simple. I got four answers. I don't see, you know, rolling hot site. I don't see cloud-based disaster recovery as a service because that's what I would do today. Nope. I see these 1990s definitions of if I was the, whatever, the U.S. Department of Agriculture and I was had to plan for a disaster. This is probably all I had for my alternate data processing facilities. I could either have a building with absolutely no equipment. I could have some equipment. I could have it fully equipped and I could have it fully equipped with data. And it does not <clears throat> necessarily mean that I got it from a provider. Most people don't have a spare house to go to. Just like cloud computing, most people use a provider. But if you look at like NIST 800-145's definition of cloud computing, does not have to be from a provider. It could be owned by the customer for the organization. Please do not assume, and I think that might be where your particular question went there, is that you were assuming that some of these were from a from an organization versus the provider. So uh, Vinay's question, I think I'm not able to read the question properly. And boy, that's the hardest part. I always say, it's, I want my students to be like a waiter, right? And if you didn't, just as, as Vinay's doing here, if you didn't understand the person's order, Right. Ask him to say it again. What did you say again? That's why I always tell you, read your questions a couple of times, right? Uh, if the question says, which of the following sites is best for an organization with proprietary equipment? I think the equipment talked of here is the organizations. You are correct. Yeah, it's like they have a proprietary whatever server. It could be a proprietary whatever application gateway. I don't know. It's the 90s, you know, <laughs> it's early zeros before the class. All right. Um, if I understood the opposite of you, uh, it's not the equipment of the DR site. So here's probably where you got a little uh, made an assumption. You assume that the organization's equipment is, uh, the organization is not the DR site. Maybe the organization owned the DR site. Whether or not it's leased from a provider which most people do, and I understand why you made that, or built, maintained by the organization. That's not important. That's not specified here. The question is, do you want a site that already has equipment there or not? I do. I don't want a cold site. Warm will do it. Hot will do it. Mirror will do it. But they didn't say anything about the recovery time objective. I'm not going to assume that. And I'm going to put the least expensive solution until you tell me, and ah, you got to be up. So they, they did not, nowhere in the question do I say the recovery time objective. Guys, when you try to architect security solutions or any solution, right? remember governance is a set of direction. Management is to get to that place, to reach that goal without wasting time and money. So if the direction is I have a goal is proprietary equipment, don't waste my money and get me a mirrored site if I find out later. Dude, you're fired. I, could have, I had an order to come in here and said that we could have spent 10 times less money. So warm is better. But I think in Vinay's question, you assumed who owns the site, and that's, that was not specified here. Yeah. Now, the truth is, these are old stuff. This is not, I mean, the biggest organization doing disaster recovery alternate sites for since I've been in the business and my, out of my hometown here in Philadelphia is SunGuard. And SunGuard doesn't maintain that type of stuff. SunGuard has uh, their managed uh, recovery services now are not hot, warm, or cold. They're all cloud-based, baby.
it's all DR as a service. And because it's all, you know, the Vantage Cloud, everything's replicated. You've got, you know, your data dispersion or stuff. So now they have really, you know, for a low cost, uh, relatively, uh, you know, the, it's nice to see that big organizations also have formatting problems on their website, but low RPO and RTO. It's pretty cool. Yeah. So I remember recovery point objective means how old, how much data loss can I experience? And you don't, you measure your data loss in time. So I need to recover to the point of five minutes ago or whatever, to the point of usually you have 24 hours under 24 hours longer than 24 hours. You know? and, and recovery time objective is how long does it take you to rebuild? It's already built. You just switch over. So it's like little RTO, you know, and neg negligible RPO, you know, depending on the size of the file you're replicating out there. But it's made, you know, they, they do some great stuff. So, uh, so with these are the metrics. And just for, for other people studying for CISSP, these metric terms have changed over the years. What most CISSPs call maximum tolerable downtime has been maximum tolerable period of disruption to the Federation. <laughs> to the to the ISO and I that bothers me because <laughs> that's another keystroke but I don't know where the CISSP is so I, CISSP tends to update a lot just because they you know didn't announce a change or do announce a change I would assume the CISSP is updated regularly you know so that's pretty cool um and, and uh you know we, we talked about the uh, RPO how much data loss right um there's also a, uh, a certification from the Federation that organizations get. Now, notice it's ISO, not IEC. So the IEC are all the technical ones. Every CISSP should, better, should know 27 series, and 27 especially 001 and 002, right? 17 is good for cloud and 34 for app dev guys. Uh, but uh, 22301 is strictly for society at large. It's not, but it is. It is a standard. You can get certified. It provides third-party attestation. It's great stuff. And it is available for free during uh, the COVID pandemic. So I highly recommend everybody download it and, and how to build a business continuity management system, you know, a BSMS, right? Just like an ISMS in uh, 27001. Now, for more information communication technology, they have a guideline. It's a little older. 27031, this was a BS25777 or whatever. And that's where some of the uh, the other uh, acronyms I've gotten uh, have come from. Um, this one is not free. Uh, and it's not even a standard. It calls it a standard. The standard is a guideline. All right. And you still make me buy it as if it were a standard, which I just did a converse like 170 US dollars today. Anyway, anyway, just to give you some more background there. Um, by the way, during these very challenging times is uh, I don't believe we're going back to business. We're going forward to the new normal. And I hope um, that you're not suffering if you are and you would like to um, prepare for the new normal. You want to sit one of my classes? Um, please don't read that as free. It's not free. My wife gets very mad at me for she sees anything free on the internet for me. Um, but it's no risk deferred payment. So for 12 months, and I'll be doing this for the next 12 months, I expect the, this pandemic to be going on for at least one more month here. It's August of 2020. So to the middle of 2021, if you would like to sit any of my classes, this is not included recording. I have to charge you for that. But the, uh, you can sit my class uh, and we'll defer the payment for 12 months. And then after 12 months, if you still are having challenges, we'll forget about it. But don't call it free. You'll get me in trouble. So send an email to sales and internet work defense, put in no risk deferred payment in the subject, and we'll get you in. And it would be an honor. And thank you again, Vinay, for your question. I hope this uh, was a satisfactory answer for you. May you and your loved ones live long and prosper and uh, save everybody else here. Thanks, everybody.